Welcome to the Climatic Startup Showdown. Today, you're going to meet three up and coming smart construction startups. You'll hear how they're helping the construction industry improve its climate impact. You'll also see them try to convince five of the region's toughest venture stage investors that their businesses are ready to take off. Let's meet those investors now. Jojo Flores co-founded Plug and Play, a Silicon Valley accelerator that invested in PayPal, Dropbox, Lending Club, and more than 1,200 other companies. Jojo now lives in Manila, where he helps start Launch Garage, one of the leading startup accelerators in the Philippines. Daniel Herson is Senior Fund Manager at the Asian Development Bank's ADB Ventures. Prior to this, he was Director of Strategy at BP Ventures and helped set up Infuse Ventures, India's first early stage clean tech venture capital fund. Shannon Kalayana Mitz wears two caps. She is a Bangkok-based partner with Gobi Partners, one of the Asia-Pacific region's longest-standing early and growth stage investors, and she is also founder and CEO of 5G Catalyst Technologies. In addition, Shannon is also a judge on Shark Tank Thailand. Juan Dito joins us from CMEX Ventures, the corporate venture capital arm of CMEX. CMEX Ventures focuses on finding the best technologies that can tackle the construction industry's toughest challenges. And last but not least, Hara Wang joins us from New York, where she leads investments and fund partnerships at Third Derivative, a climate tech accelerator and ecosystem for climate innovation. A warm welcome to all our judges. Now, here are all the rules of the showdown. Our startups will each have three minutes to pitch their business plans. We will hear from all three, one after another. Then, it's our judges' turn. The startups will go backstage while the investors discuss their pitches, completely unfiltered with no holds barred. You, the audience, will get to be a fly in the wall, listening to the kind of discussion that investors normally have only behind closed doors. Then we'll vote, and the startup that comes out on top, that's the winner of our Smart Construction Startup Showdown. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. We've pre-selected the order with a random draw. First up is Kush Agarwal from Wavescan. Wavescan is a Singapore-based startup that uses see-through electromagnetic scanner technology and advanced AI to inspect buildings, aircrafts, and more. Their technology can also be integrated into autonomous vehicles like drones and robots. Wavescan hopes to standardize end-to-end AI-enabled asset inspection for a resilient infrastructure and safer, more productive, and more livable cities. Welcome, Kush. Take it away. The building and construction industry contributes a staggering 39% of the world's CO2 emissions. Emissions from demolishing and reconstructing are significantly higher than proactively maintaining our built environment in their usable lifetime. This fix when broken mentality has caused multiple large scale disasters, taking human lives and causing huge financial losses making this a global issue. The later we intervene into the aging cycle of the asset, the more likely we will have to reconstruct it. And to ensure that this does not happen, the built environment industry must practice proactive maintenance. At Wavescan, we are focusing on the core of non-destructive testing technology that enables efficient, automated, and data-driven inspections. Through a decade-long research at ASTAR and now at Wavescan, we have developed a first-of-its-kind see-through 3D imaging sensor technology that has high resolution, is completely contactless, and is safe to use. We are integrating our sensors on various robotic platforms to achieve complete automation of data collection. This will enable reliable inspections without risking the safety of inspectors. We are providing an end-to-end 3D imaging solution that enables the built environment ecosystem to automate the data collection, processing, and analysis of the structural defects at various stages of the asset. We are building a solution that enhances the entire value chain of the smart construction industry and fits into the entire process from planning to construction Our scanners can be used for quality assurance and control of 3D printed building materials and precast slabs. And with regards to the maintenance, the data would drive the process and AI algorithms would help with predictive maintenance for professional engineers to make more well-informed, timely, 
proactive decisions and after validating our technology with various multinational clients through paid pilot projects in four countries we are now embarking on a nationwide project with the housing development board of singapore towards operationalizing our technology at scale with the structural inspections at the core of an asset's resilience we have a huge market opportunity in the ndt equipment industry so far we have a sizable clientele consisting of 40 over early adopter companies from built environment industry spanning over 12 countries and at this stage of the business we are experimenting with various business models in terms of direct sales subscriptions or partnerships to maximize the adoption of our technology in the market and we feel that our sensor technology is the next game changer that can position us as a key player in the ndt sensor industry we are able to develop this cutting edge technology due to deep domain expertise within the team and support from singapore government seeing recent global natural disasters we cannot continue feigning ignorance of our actions so let us build a safer and more resilient infrastructure towards a sustainable and livable future thank you Cushion wave scan. Next up, Aku Willenius from KDO. KDO uses AI to make higher quality concrete with less waste and fewer greenhouse gas emissions. They got their start in Finland and now have development and sales operations in China. Is KDO ready to scale beyond China to the rest of Asia and the Pacific? Aku, let's hear about your business model. Hello, I'm Aku. the CEO of Kadio. We create data-driven products for producing better concrete. Cement is the most important component in making concrete, but unfortunately, it is responsible in creating 15% of all CO2 in China. In addition to the CO2 problem, overusing cement costs $6 billion dollars in China every year. One of the problems behind these numbers is that the industry is still using very old methods in some of their processes. For example, the slump test in this picture was invented 200 years ago and is still in everyday use. KDO's AI-powered products for concrete production help concrete industry reduce CO2 by optimizing processes. The product also improves the quality of concrete, which cuts costs in building our cities and infrastructure. Our product is a combination of rich data sources, IoT edge computation, and cloud analytics. We complete the product by offering apps for data visualization and provide the needed services. The current solutions in the industry are manual, slow, and prone to errors, whereas our AI product is automated and works in real time. We have a 12 billion dollar market opportunity of which 60% is in China. We are directly operating in three Chinese cities to tackle this great opportunity through a hardware-enabled SaaS business model. We install our smart data acquisition units in our customers' production plants for data collection and machine learning. This model allows us to charge for new software capabilities that we release. We have worked with many famous concrete producers in China and organizations in Europe to pilot and get feedback on our product. KDO has an experienced team for creating IoT products together with international sales and marketing background. We have decades of experience in working at large multinational companies. KDO is a concrete intelligence company which invests in growing, protecting and maintaining our know-how. We are first in the market and have the access to vast amounts of data for developing key algorithms. We are now raising 1.5 million dollars funding for completing our product portfolio for concrete production and start sales of our first product. To summarize, KDU provides data-driven products for producing better concrete. We help concrete producers in China save 6 billion dollars in cement. And most of our 12 billion dollar business opportunity is in Asia. Thank you, Aku and Kadio. Last but not least, we have Gary Ng from Viat. Viat automates construction monitoring to increase productivity and safety while also reducing delays. The Viat dashboard 
can collect data from any online camera, is simple to install, and can be up and running in just five minutes. Over to you, Gary. Construction industry has still increased in productivity in the last 25 years. 98% of construction projects are delayed and cost increased by 18%. One in 10 construction workers got injured and each fatal injury cost the construction company more than 1 billion USD dollars. The construction industry is a 10 trillion USD market and just monitoring is 22 billion USD dollars and half of it is from Asia. More than 80% of construction site already has real-time monitoring, but it is all done by human, so it is inaccurate and inefficient. Our AI computer vision solutions automate construction monitoring. We are the first Asia-grade, industrial-grade AI cloud solution platforms. We can connect to any kind of different cameras, such as CCTV, drone, 360, and even your mobile phone. We are an all-in-one solution system on cloud and we can connect to your cameras just in second and it can trigger real-time alerts extracting all the relevant data and insights from your videos and image. We have one of the largest data sets of construction domain in Asia and we have built up more than 30 proprietary AI modules and we have won and deployed more than 50 large different types of construction projects. It is extremely simple setup, very flexible and suitable for the construction progress and environment to change different AI modules and it can easily connect it to all the smart sensors in construction sites. It can reduce more than 70% of human monitoring, we act 10 times faster and it can run 24 7 non-stop. Our core competitors is Indusol AI from US and they recently acquired by Procore for 100 million USD dollars. We are the leading company in this field in Asia and our market is more than three times larger than the US. We are in SaaS model, so we charge by AI modules per cameras per month. We have very strong growth in 2020 and we have hit our 1 million USD dollars mark in 2020. This year, we expect to oversee from Southeast Asia and Europe. We have some of the top tier media coverage and we are ranked as the top 50 content startup by CMAX Venture. We are also invested by world-class investors such as Alibaba, SOFB, Vector Venture and Artisan Venture. We have a great mix of domain expertise and technical expertise in our team. Me and my co-founder Hugo both are graduated as a construction engineers and become senior management from multi-international companies and we have a global team with a great mix of AI, software, and hardware. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Gary and VF. Those were our three contenders, Wavescan, KDO, and VF. Their fate is now in the judges' hands. Let's kick the conversation off with Hara from Third Derivative. Hara, which of these companies made the best impression on you? So among the three, I actually have a pretty clear favorite, and that is Kydeal, and it's because of its climate impact. We all know, like, cement industry is, I, I believe, 8% of the world's total global carbon emissions. Um, their initial market is China. China produces more than half of the world's cement. China has very aggressive goals to try to achieve carbon neutrality across all its heavy industries. I, I respect, uh, I recognize what uh, the, the point of Hara here. Um, it's just a, from, from a point of view of an investor, I don't think it's going to be a big company. And uh, it's not uh, so, it doesn't meet the, my standards, at least for as an investable company and uh, something that can really scale and, and be, uh, as, uh, a, you know, even a unicorn. No? I think that uh, with, especially because I think the the the, uh, the trend of of the con in the construction industry will be in prefab. Uh, I I think there could be some opportunity there to tweak what the, their business model and uh, <clears throat> who they're trying to sell to. Yeah, I have to agree with that one as well. Um, I do appreciate the fact that uh, Kaidio. Uh, does address the main mandate of climatic. Although um, as an investor, our job 
is to make the most money and put our money on the the horse that's going to win, right? And this is this is one key difference common between a climate accelerator versus an investor here. <laughs> so, Hara, I, I got a challenge there. Um, if it's not commercially successful, can it scale? Well, I mean, it's it's too early it, to see, right? It's too it's, it's so too early to see. I mean, what I mean, what I'm trying to sort of like the point is. Um, to have really big impact, is something has to become meaningfully big and adopted, right. which therefore requires certain scalability and commercial viability. Um, but I'm wondering how scalability is long sales cycle. And what is the willingness for someone in the cement industry to pay for essentially a, a software solution? Like how, how many clients are there and are they willing to pay more than say $100,000 a year for a contract? But I do agree that it's tackling what is a very large problem, which is, of course, the emissions from the cement industry. I think that's Actually, a good question. Uh, Why don't we jump to Juan and uh, yeah, and yeah. So what Katie is doing is kind of like, let's say, optimizing the amount of cement that you are putting into concrete by measuring how much water it comes from like the different like sources that you are putting. So from the aggregates that have some level of embed water. So by this way, that is actually currently done manually, there have a huge potential to make a lot of savings in terms of both carbon emissions, but also financial services, because at the end, what we end up doing, and uh, most of the concrete suppliers out there, is putting more cement on the mixer and, and let's say putting more carbon into the atmosphere. So like all those three groups are amazing. I'm personally in VIAG. I met face-to-face uh, with Gary, the founder in Shanghai, when I was back there two years ago, when they were doing this SOSV acceleration program. I, I will say that one of the things that we continuously ask for entrepreneurs, like in construction technology startups, is two things. One, you guys need to understand the nuance of the construction industry. It's first really traditional, and like the mindset itself needs to change a lot. So mostly having a construction industry background is something that, uh, let's say, saves a lot of time and money to both the team and the investors. And secondly, I will say that um, like COVID has made a lot of like groups in the industry like change their mindset. And specifically, one of the things that changed the most is around health and safety. So health and safety now is like in place, specifically in Asia, I have seen crazy things around health and safety on construction sites. So personally, I will say that the largest pain point for these startups to be solving is the one that is that VIAC is solving. But I feel like I've seen that solution before. And it doesn't seem like, again, that hard to... You know, you, you're talking about image recognition and a little bit of analytics. And I'm sure, you know, you, you know, it, it takes a few building sites to train the algorithms properly. But once you're done in the row 50 or 100, I mean, I guess it's a modern, you know, this diminishing utility, right? And how much is just about selling it? And wouldn't a lot of the large construction company already have something in place of this nature? With Viac, you know, what caught my eye was uh, their partnerships with Huawei and Autodesk. And of course, you know, uh, investors like Alibaba and SOSV and Vector uh, uh, investing in them. But the business itself, from an investor's point of view, I, you know, this sort of companies, you're kind of lucky when you get to, if you get over a $100 million uh, valuation. So just to add really quickly, one of the reasons why they had really high growth during COVID was because of COVID. So they actually incorporated rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of their sales picked up from this. So I think like long-term is going to be around for a while. I think it's here to stay, right? The other thing I will say is I did Google um, construction safety and project management software, and there were hundreds. So I too, because I wasn't on the deal team, um, I too am wondering what is their edge they're the competitive edge. Maybe it is the partnerships they have, maybe it is COVID, and maybe they're just really good at what they do, you know, in, in sales and, and construction industry. But what what is the thing that makes them stand out? Basically, like, like main competitors are mostly based in the US, so in the CI, for example, and the likes. What I've seen is that these guys are the only ones doing what they are doing in Asia. So mm-hmm. I do see that there is a lot that they have won already, Things that they have been educated the marketing, educating the market in Hong Kong, Singapore, Southeast Asia, China, and other markets. So always that I make an introduction to this team, like the corporates that kind of like let's say give me like feedback back on them and say, these guys are awesome. There is no other solution that is able to serve me 
in the Philippines, for example, where we have some operations. Yeah, I guess there are maybe slightly different use cases in, in uh, more developing countries, maybe more on safety, maybe more of, you know, theft control, other things that maybe, uh, you know, maybe less on sort of productivity, maybe other issues, right? So maybe I have to tailor it a little bit to, to those needs, right? Uh, that's uh, right. You know, I agree with you, Daniel. And if I can recommend something to them, you know, uh, maybe focus on uh, prevention of theft, which is kind of rampant in the, uh, in the construction industries here in this part of the world versus in others. Yeah, that, that's for me, it's always like, for me, you know, we always talk about pain points, but I have to something that the site manager goes to bed worrying about, right? Mm-hmm. And I do think like theft of material machines, for example, could be one of those things, right? That if there's theft of something very valuable on the site, they will be accountable for it, right? Um, so that could be something that keeps them awake at night, right? And if it doesn't keep someone awake at night, it's not really, it's a point, but it's not a pain point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I actually like to judge this point also, Daniel. So one of the things that I also like for them is like they have like a modular approach. So basically I see the future for them like to become in this platform. And what you guys mentioned already, so they have integrations with a bunch of softwares that are currently being used in Asia. Yeah. So if they are, let's say they effectively are able to transfer this message to the industry that they can, you can use them like for health and safety, like prediction and detection, but also for clocking clock out of trucks. Okay, great. I think uh, um, I think there were a few uh, people who have not mentioned uh, who uh, their favorite is. I think uh, Daniel, do uh, you want to tell us uh, which one was your favorite? I, I do like WaveScan. I see a real technology edge. There, my main concern is that I think they're still finding that kind of clear product market fit that hook, like what is the main use case for the technology? There still is a technology, a solution looking for a problem mainly at this stage, I think. And then also concern, I don't know, as well as, you know, we talk about preventative maintenance as a main use case. Preventive maintenance is always is, is great concept, right? But for people to take a decision today that costs money to reduce risk and save cost in the future has always been difficult. Uh, so there has to be something I think that has like instant gratification somehow uh, in terms of usage, right? My big question mark here is, is it really cost efficient when we are talking about a completely, you know, unmanned experience when like for so many decades, like, you're basically just sending a person out there doing every three months. Like, does that, is there any cost benefit of using a te- technology based approach? And just to jump in here, because I kind of know this industry as well. After talking to a bunch of these petrochemical companies during COVID and the move into more automation and human life that actually has to go and inspect, it is much more preferred that it, it is done by an unmanned um, you know, drone or, or robot or whatever it is. So I think like in terms of like saving human life or making sure that uh, you're protected in terms of whether or not be COVID and or gas explosions or whatever it is, or chemicals, right? Then there's also the cost savings. So I, again, I haven't seen the business model here. Yeah, maybe I should chime in and also be open that we did invest in uh, WaveScan. And I can tell you, a lot of our corporate partners are very excited about what these guys are doing. You know, we were the ones who uh, facilitated the pilot with Thai oil uh, and PPT, PTT, sorry. We uh, facilitated their POCs with ExxonMobil. They did a pilot and finished with uh, JR Railways. And uh, they're doing stuff with Samsung, Hyundai, Kajima, so everybody's, uh, you know, we're seeing, <clears throat> we're seeing a validation of the technology. We're seeing validation of real problems. Now it's just a matter of quantifying, you know, those, those particular industries. Thank you, judges, for such a vigorous discussion. I learned so much from it. Now I'd like to ask you to spend a few minutes to prepare your vote for our Climatic Startup Showdown Smart Construction Champion. While the judges do that, let's return to our contestants. They've been watching from backstage. Kush, Aku, Gary, welcome back. Aku, let's start with you and Kaidio. So some of the feedback that we heard from the judges was that Kaidio would have issues convincing customers to change their processes to accept your technology because you have a lot of companies that have been mixing cement for many years. So have you encountered this problem and how are you solving that? 
yes yeah we un- we understand that that we are um serving an industry uh, that that is um, still uh changing uh to digital technologies and some some customers are earlier in the technology adoption than others others and uh, to address this challenge we are piloting with our customers offering our systems for piloting and working very closely with our customers uh to help them understanding the power of our technology we basically um install our uh, KDO water content optimizer in in customers production facilities and work closely with our customers to um, uh, make sure it is uh, running optimally in, in their facilities and and, and uh, also customizing a little bit uh, our product for their needs now in the early phases of of our development think about the overall comments that the judges made uh, what do you think do you agree do you disagree what are your thoughts Well one thing that that caught my my attention was uh, the environmental friendliness versus financial impact of our product and and because this is a climate uh, climate uh, focused show um I tailored my pitch towards the, the climate climate message but I also realized uh, after listening the um the the judges that um still especially uh, among the VC audience environmental friendliness is important but of course VCs invest uh, because of 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 the monetary impact the startup is making which is very important for us to understand But yes, definitely. The double bottom line uh, is uh, always key. You can't you can't lose have one without the other. <laughs> yes. Um, Gary, uh, we just heard from the judges about VIAC. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? Um, so I heard a lot of like um, questions regarding like the AI monitoring solutions, the potentials behind this industry, like construction, for example. And um, so I think those are really common questions that we come across when we talk to C- uh, VCs as well. And uh, especially if they are not willing to the construction industry, they don't know how much those data means to the construction company, for example. And our technology basically just simplifies the process for you to capture those valuable data actually from the construction site. So yeah, that's like a process to educate the market, but at the same time, it's educating the whole industry as well. So sometimes we just being an educator rather than a technology solution providers. <laughs> that's definitely a good point that you bring up because a lot of technology companies that are breaking the borders they're operating on the frontiers of technology have to spend a lot of time educating right? and and like you said not just investors but the actual consumers and so that actually takes up a lot of time and money one of the other comments that the judges had was on your focus on asia and they liked this fact because asia is a growing area for construction what are your thoughts on that Um, I think we are lucky actually in a market that is uh, very focused in construction um, productivity and safety. So in Asia, there's a like few top tier country that they are uh, start to be the pioneers in terms of deploying new technologies to improve the safety and productivity in the region. And I think the time that we actually step up to do this business is around 2017. So we got a uh, like a early mover uh, in the regions to start doing it and we have like uh, more than 50 to 60 deployments right now in um, all time in Asia and that give us the advantage in terms of the domain knowledge and the deployments experience that we gained over the years so a lot of the construction company after they work with us they trust the solutions they trust the accuracy they trust what AI can do and they just continue to explore like new application from it so And in that standpoint, I think we are lucky. And on the other side, like uh, some of the head-to-head competitor we have uh, is mainly from US. And these two competitor actually they either got acquired a, or they got some very serious like investor funding. So I think in the other side, the investment um, sector already agree that this is like an area that has a lot of potential. And um, and I think the, the the market is just keep going for us. Kush, uh, we just heard the judges' comments about WaveScan. What do you think? I think uh, in terms of comment, uh, I mean, we hear the same kind of comments from VCs when we are talking about fundraising, construction tech in general. I think as the other founders mentioned, it's a traditional industry and uh, there is a lot of uh, knowledge sharing or I mean, in terms of technology, talking to clients 
in educating or explaining them how it can improvise their processes efficiencies and all of that so i think in that regards the comments were very in line to how what we are facing in terms of industry challenges in terms of acquiring the market or uh, converting the paid pilot projects and things like that uh, i mean though we have uh, 50 over clients in pipeline but these pilot projects are happening one by one and at the same time we are not a project company but a products company so the idea is to acquire these clients and then once we launch the commercial product then push the technology to these clients in terms of either uh, products or subscription models so one one of the other uh, comments that the judges made was that predictive technology it feels like it's a nice to have because you're not really sure who's going to pay for this because you don't really see the benefit of it immediately you kind of think it's a 10 year return and we're just not sure if companies really have that type of long term viewpoint uh, what are your thoughts on that comment uh in general the technology adoption is happening and with digitization automation drones and other aspects coming in i think there is a huge market opening up for new sensor technology uh, today though the construction tech is very reactive and traditional in nature but i think most of the stakeholders uh, are moving in that direction and besides just the predictive maintenance part we have technology that can address multiple use cases where there is no existing sensor technology to capture that kind of data or anomaly happening on a structural level so in that regards as well we based on all of our client engagements currently in 10 over countries uh, the clients coming from very traditional backgrounds or industries as well are very excited about this technology and this also becomes very essential in a way where building and construction authorities or government counterparts are also talking about this so like for example recently we have started a 18 months project with the housing development board of singapore and their primary focus is towards moving on data driven maintenance predictive maintenance so that in longer run they can minimize the downtime of the assets or Uh, even in terms of basically asset management in general gentlemen thank you for your pitches in selecting contestants for the startup showdown we scoured asia and the pacific for the very best early stage smart construction startup only one of you can be our smart construction startup showdown champion i've spoken individually with our judges and i know that they're all enthusiastic about all three of you we're excited to see you all grow Okay, now it's time for the judging. Daniel, can we hear what your thoughts are on your favorite company? So these are three really exciting companies and I really like all of them actually. And I think, you know, there's aspect to each of them that I find really interesting and I would love to have another conversation with them. Um they're all trying to transform uh, a very conservative industry that also have a very very significant climate impact. Um but having to pick one winner out of the three um and putting an investor hat on i i like to see something that has a clearer um barrier to entry a clearer moat um something that can be potentially a a must have solution and on that basis i go for wavescan uh, but i would like to see a bit more focus on which industry going to target and ideally i would like to see more significant and clearer climate impact all right wavescan gets one vote Shannon, what about you? Okay. So, um the team, there could only be one winner. Um this team and this uh company excites me. Um great team, great tech, defensible. Um they have real POCs, they have real traction. Um the exit's going to be great. Um their IP is defensible so far, and I love that it's transferable to other industries. So, um WaveScan is my vote. Wow, wave scan, two votes. All right, let's see. Juan, what do you think? So, three tier one teams solving real pain points for the second largest industry in the world. So, that decision. But I will say that the founder's perspective and the industry understanding from Biax is very much unique. So, my winner's vote goes to Biax. All right. Wave scan 2 and Biax 1. Hara, what do you think? What's your favorite? 
So it's three team doing the very, very difficult task of transforming the construction industry. And I would prefer to partner with a team that disrupt the construction industry while creating outsized climate impact. So my vote goes to Kaidio. Okay, now we've got quite a diversity. Two Wavescan, one VF, and one Kadio. Jojo, what do you think? What's your what are your thoughts? Kudos to all the founders and the entrepreneurs today. I wish you all success and uh, thank you for making this world a better place to live in for all of us. The primary reason for my choice is scalability and sustainability of the product and the technology. For this, I place my vote on Wavescan. Wow, okay, so we've got it. The winner is Wavescan. Congratulations, Wavescan. Thanks, Lynn. Um, I think um, all these three startups that participated in this uh, challenge have been disrupting the industry in their own ways. And uh, there is a lot of more work that needs to be done in terms of accelerating this uh, laid back traditional industry. And uh, kudos to all the founders who are uh, disrupting this market and industry. And uh, best of luck to both uh, Gary and Aku. I think we can all agree that the showdown was hard fought. Each of the startups had their strengths and each also had their own areas of improvement. The key is in striking that fine balance between historical traction plus future potential. Again, congratulations to Wavescan. That's all the time we have. Thank you to our panel, Jojo Flores from Plug and Play, Daniel Herson from ADB Ventures, Shannon Kalayana Mitz from Gobi Ventures, Juan Nieto from CMX Ventures, and Hara Wang from Third Derivative. And also a warm thank you to our Showtime competitors, KDO, VX, and Wavescan. We appreciate all your work and contributions to keeping our environment cleaner and greener. Keep growing, keep innovating, and keep resilient.